From the Ear to There Travel Studio, this is the Ear to There Disney Podcast. The Ear to There Podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to There, it's time to start the fun. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to There Disney Podcast. I am your host, Phil Gramlich. I am also the owner and the operator of Ear to There Travel, which is a Disney-specialized travel agency. Now, if you're wondering why it might sound a little echoey in the studio today, <laughs> it's because I'm actually recording in my hotel room at the Boardwalk Resort. Now, or the technically, it's the Disney's Boardwalk Inn and Villas, I believe. So we are here, my family and I are here for an early 40th, yes, sadly, that's true, 40th birthday celebration for me. I don't turn 40 for a couple more months, but that's why we're here. And we are here, well, we're here for that reason. We're here to have a great family vacation. And I wanted to record some podcasts live from here in Walt Disney World. So yesterday... We had the awesome opportunity to, well, we drove, first of all, let me tell you what our, what our trip was like. And I didn't, I don't think I want to have the, what about Bob segment or the other, or some other of the other segments that I have on the show. Well, I don't know if I have <laughs> any other segments if you listen each week, but, uh, the music and, and all that may have to wait and the post editing may have to wait for this episode. I just want to get this episode out as soon as I can. So. We left Pennsylvania two days ago. We drove amazingly with a five, two five-year-olds and a seven-year-old. We drove. We left at four o'clock in the morning on Sunday uh, from my driveway in Pennsylvania, right outside Philadelphia. We drove. We were on the road about ten hours uh, total. In total, the trip took us about twelve to thirteen hours because we had a listen. You have little bladders in that car. We had lots of potty breaks, <laughs> a whole lot of potty breaks. And listen, you've heard Amy on the show, my wife, my lovely, awesome, beautiful, talented, I can keep going wife. She needs to make a lot of stops too. She's a little, <laughs> she's a little high maintenance. No, I'm kidding. She'll listen to this. Uh, she's not high maintenance at all, but we had a lot of stops. So we spent the night in Savannah, Georgia, two nights ago. And yesterday uh, on a Monday morning in July. We got up and we left and we got to Walt Disney World from Savannah around 1 p.m. Checked into our resort here at Boardwalk and we kind of just dropped their bags off, dropped the car off and hopped right on a boat right over to Hollywood Studios and did what all of us were dying to do and really couldn't wait to do, which was go and see Toy Story Land. Now, I have to say, I was watching all the coverage of Toy Story Land, and I didn't make this public. I didn't put this on my page. I didn't put this on Facebook, you know, on Instagram or my blog or say it on a podcast, anywhere, by videos, nowhere. I, I said this to no one except maybe my wife because I was nervous. And I'm, listen, I'm a Disney fan first. I love Walt Disney World. I've been going, been going there since... With my family since I was 12 or 13. Uh, we go, I go with my family two or three times a year. I go to Disneyland every year. So we take a Disney cruises. I mean, I, we are Disney fans. And I'm a huge Imagineering fan. And I love everything that Imagineering has done in the parks. And I, I never want to dislike something. I will. Uh, if I, I'll tell you my honest opinion. And I won't sugarcoat it. So I was really, really nervous about what Toy Story Land looked like in person. Because from the pictures and the videos and all the media coverage and all the bloggers and the podcasters and the vloggers and YouTubers and all those people, I wasn't impressed even a little bit by looking at it from afar, right? I didn't, I, I wasn't impressed. I was like, well, it looks like Disney stuck a bunch of toys on the ground and 
you know, said, here we go. That, that's what you have. And I, I wasn't, I was worried. I was like, this kind of looks like something from a lesser uh, quote unquote amusement park and not the, you know, the leading theme park builder on the planet. So I was nervous. And I have to tell you, man, when we walked in there, you know, you, you walk down the, the old stretch in front of where one, you know, Walt Disney one man stream used to be towards where Pixar place used to be. You know, you used to see the sign. There used to be a Luxo junior that used to come out of the wall there on your left-hand side. The entrance to Toy Story Mania was there on your right. So right before you get to the old Pixar place sign, right before you get to the old Toy Story Midway Mania entrance, you make that right. And it's a stretch of about, Maybe 100 yards, and there, maybe 70 yards, and there, right in front of you, is Toy Story Land. I mean, you make that right, I have to say, the first thing I thought of was, whoa, what a reveal. And I was really, literally shocked, because I didn't expect it to, I didn't expect to be excited by it. I was really worried that I was going to be disappointed. And as we walked toward it, I couldn't believe how cool it looked, and it only gets better when you walk into the land. And again, I, I'm i waiting for Star Wars Land, which, by the way, you can see a lot of Star Wars Land from Toy Story Land. You can, you know, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. You can see the mountains that are being built. I mean, clearly, right now they're concrete, so they're gray. There are a couple of brown ones that have been painted uh, that, you, that you'll kind of recognize from the concept art. I'll get back to that, but you can really see it, especially from the Slinky Dog Coaster, which I'll get to in a minute. But... You know, walking into that land, everything is immersive. Everything talks. Everything makes noises. There's music from every inch. So what I was worried about was that it was going to seem like this just hastily put together land with a couple of attractions and a new, you know, a new entrance for a Midway Mania, and that was it. Well, it's the opposite of that. It's very well thought out, incredibly immersive and themed. Again, I thought, okay, put a couple Tinker Toys up. There's a Lincoln Log here, a big Oreo here. It's a Honey, I Shrunk the Audience playset. It's not that at all. When you walk in, you hear Woody talking to you. Uh, you know, if you've seen the big Toy Story Land sign that Woody's kind of leaning on, he has a lot to say if you kind of hang out by him. You walk through the land and, and everything. Again, there's a Buzz Lightyear out in front of the alien swirling saucers attraction, and he talks to you. There's a Jesse and a Rex on top of the Slinky Dog Dash roller coaster, and they have a conversation. She's like saving Slinky from, I mean, I'm sorry, not Slinky, Rex from something. And she's like, I'll be right there, Rex. That's my my Jesse voice. <laughs> I'm coming, Rex. Uh, that's, yeah, that's as good as, I don't do a girl voice. Um, <laughs> my, my daughters would disagree because I make fun of them. Well, man, I make fun of them. That sounds mean. I tease them all the time in their girl voices. I say stuff like, my name's Alexa, and and I have a boyfriend at school. <laughs> she loves that. Anyway, no, she doesn't really. She laughs, though. Anyway, so you get Jesse up there, and like the little these little touches are everywhere. And, you, and I didn't expect it. Like, the railings are Tinker Toys or Connects. If, you, if you're... A child of the 80s or 90s, you'll remember Connects. They were like a, uh, almost like a Lego, but each, it was like a spoke and wires. It, you would know it if you saw it, but you'll recognize it as soon as you're in the land. The lights are the Christmas lights that are kind of strung up all over the place. You really feel like you've shrunk down to the size of a toy, and you're in Andy's backyard. Andy did all this, right? Andy set up Slinky Dog as a roller coaster. Uh, that's the point of it is, you know, Andy, the, the reason that everything looks the way it does for a reason. The foliage, the trees, the bushes on Slinky Dog Coaster look the way because they're in Andy's backyard. And Andy built that roller coaster out of toys that he had in his house or laying around in his yard. Uh, and that's, it, it, you really feel like that when you walk through the queue, when you're on the coaster itself, when, which, by the way, holy cow. I, I'm going to get my bring my kids in uh, in a couple of minutes to kind of talk about the land and, and tell you what they thought, because I, I think they all have a really fun perspective on it. Uh, but 
Amy and I were blown away. And the roller coaster, Slinky Dog, I expected to like it. I love roller coasters. I didn't expect to absolutely love it as much as I did. My daughter, it was the only one brave enough to go on it yesterday. Well, me, of course, because, listen, I'm a professional. <laughs> I have to ride it. That's my job. But, yeah, right. I, like, I didn't enjoy the heck out of it, right? But the only other one brave enough to ride it yesterday was my daughter, Zoe, who is one of, the, one of our twins. She's five. She was in her honor dress. And she was, man, she was ready to roll. She was so excited to ride. And you get on, and it has, the restraints are, uh, it's not a simple lap bar. It's one that goes kind of like in between your legs. And it, I, you know, it's a little, it holds you really in place. And I was like, wow, this is a pretty intense lap bar for a kid coaster. I thought maybe it would just be the regular bar that went across your, your, your lap there. No, there's a reason why it's not a regular lap bar. It's because this thing, it doesn't go extremely fast, but it moves and it goes, you are literally sideways a couple of times. Like I find, I found myself grabbing onto, like it, grabbing onto Zoe's dress and holding it. Like if <laughs> God forbid something were to happen and the restraint would give away, like I'd be able to hold onto her with my left arm <laughs> by her dress. But that, that it makes you nervous because you. You literally go sideways a couple of times. When you have a five-year-old on the outside and you're, you know, this guy on the inside, it freaks you out a little bit, but freaks me out in a good way. I laughed so hard. She was just belly laughing hysterically the entire time. Loved it. I, I, I Again, I can't tell you how much I loved it. Alien Swirling Saucers, um, acronym aside, <laughs> we say things like, Seven Doors Mine Train is 7DMT, right? Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is BTMRR. Alien Swirling Saucers is, well, use your imagination. <laughs> I wonder how they're going to refer to that one on the radio as the Disney cast members. I wonder how they're referring to it now. Uh, because if you use the acronym, it wouldn't be a very fa family-friendly podcast today, let me tell you. There are a couple other ones in the parks that if you use... If you use the acronyms, you'd be like, whoa, they should have thought that through. <laughs> so there's one in Magic Kingdom in Tomorrowland. I'll let you think about it, uh, but I'm not going to mention it because it's very, again, very family-friendly, and I don't want your children hearing this and blaming me, <laughs> coming to you with a new word. Uh, but the Alien Swirling Saucers was, it's, it's a clone of the, the Mater, I always forget the name of it, the Mater ride out in California Adventure, uh, the Junkyard Jamboree, that's kind of a... Now, it's a spinner, but it's not a spinner. So it spins around. It's it's unique. It's different. It's so much fun. We loved it when we rode it out in California, uh, the Mater version. We loved the version in, uh, in Toy Story Land yesterday as well. Alien Swirling Saucers, so much fun. It looks like a kiddie ride. But as an adult, you get on it, and you, you're kids, and you just laugh. Like, it's just, un, like, it's, it doesn't look as fun when you see it. But then you look at the people's faces who are riding it, all the guests, and they're dying laughing. And you're like, all right, well, this looks like it's more fun than it, this should be more fun than it looks. And then you get on, <laughs> and you just laugh so hard. It's so much fun. I was crushing my poor girls. I rode with both girls. I was in the middle. And a couple of the turns, I just I just crushed them <laughs> into the side of the vehicle. And, they, oh, my God, they were dying laughing. It was so much fun. So, yeah, and then we, you know, the, the weights weren't all that bad yesterday. I think Slinky was a 70, 75-minute wait. Uh, Aliens Rolling Saucers, we had a fast pass for. That was running at about a 45 to 55-minute wait during the time we were there. Then Toy Story Midway Mania was at, like, a 40-minute wait. We walked right on. I think it said 50 when we got in. The new entrance, by the way, is awesome. The new queue is great. My kids loved walking through the queue. Ice cold air conditioning. It was a hot day yesterday. The queue kept their attention completely. They were pointing out Candyland cards and Monopoly and crayons and Oreos and Uno cards. And then when we got up to Mr. Potato Head, who's back, by the way, Mr. Potato Head is back. And awesome. Just as cool as ever. 
My wife had her sunglasses on her head, uh, Amy did. And when she walked by Mr. Potato Head, he said, Oh, look, this lady's hair is so famous, it's wearing sunglasses. And it was really cool. We all laughed so hard. So it's cool that Mr. Potato Head is back, picking out fun things with the guests, interacting, asking questions, asking you to raise your hand, telling jokes. It was great. So if you haven't seen Mr. Potato Head in a while, because he's been gone for a few years from the queue since the construction started, uh, I think even a little before for Toy Story Land, it's definitely worth waiting in that queue. Again, ice cold air conditioning almost the whole way. There is an outdoor part of the queue that's undercover. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know. It looks like maybe if it's about 80 or 90 more minutes, it'll, you can go. You'll be outside. Uh, but it's covered, and they have fans. So it's not that bad. I did notice that a lot of Toy Story Land, it lacks shade. Uh, we had a kind of a cloudy sun in and out day yesterday. So I'm not quite sure <laughs> what we would have thought if it was, you know, 95 and blazing sun the entire time. Uh, but with the clouds, you know, the sun in and out, and it was about 90, 91 yesterday, it wasn't that bad. Uh, we, we found little shady spots. You know, you can look around and find a shady spot to sit in. Uh, but there's no indoor queue for Slinky Dog or for Alien Swirling Saucers. There is undercover queue with fans. Uh, so that was good enough for us when we waited for the Slinky Dog and then we waited for just a couple of minutes in the Fast Pass for Alien Swirling Saucers. Uh, the, you know, I can see how people are saying it's hot, though. It is. A lot of it is just bright in the sun. It can be a hot land, uh, but it's just so well done. And I, I, I have to say, for everything about it, from Andy's, I mean, Andy's footprints, literally, <laughs> are all over the land. When I say his footprints, I don't mean like Walt's footprints are all over Disneyland. I mean, there are giant Andy footprints throughout the land. So you can see where he walked when he set up the Slinky Coaster and when he, you know, set up Alien uh, Swirling Saucers in his lunchbox. Woody's Lunchbox is there, which is a quick service uh, location to have. Woody's Lunchbox has mobile ordering. I would say use it because there's no inside seating. Uh, it's all it's it's a it's a takeaway window. So use your mobile ordering and then find somewhere kind of shady to sit is what I would say. How uh, that line could get long. It was long yesterday because they have some pretty unique offerings over there. Unique New York. Unique. I don't know why I thought of that. Is that from Anchorman? Anyway, or from anyone who really did any kind of actual broadcast training. Not me, who just started a podcast from his basement and it became, then built an office around it. Um, <laughs> uh, complete amateur, but I hope you're enjoying this episode. Uh, um, but yeah, so his, his, it's funny. His, uh, Andy's footprints are everywhere. And yeah, the, the, the Woody's lunchbox, they have some... There's a, uh, that's what I was saying, I'm sorry, unique, <laughs> now I'm going to laugh every time I say it, unique offerings. There's a Monte Cristo over there, which is super famous in Disneyland. Uh, there's a Nutella breakfast sandwich. There is a, there's an adult lemonade, which is an adult, um, you know, it's a lemonade with an adult beverage uh, included. So that's kind of fun. Use your mobile ordering, use your phone. Literally, order it when you get to the land, when you get to the lunchbox, hit, I'm here. It's done in like 30 seconds. All right, so we're back here with my favorite three kiddos in the world, Alexa, Zoe, Zoe and... Dad. Say your name. Who is it? What's your name? The first the boy, what's your name? You gotta talk, say it loud. Dad. Jack. Who, what's your name? Zoe. What's your name? All right, so Zoe and Jack, Jack, you can't whine. We got to just talk right, okay? <laughs> Zoe and Jack are both five, and Alexa is I'm seven. And yes, and they are twins. So, what we wanted to talk to you about, since I was on a couple minutes Dad, ago, why didn't the baby is do Toy Story Land. What? Fun. This isn't fun? Can you do this for me for two minutes, and then we can go back to our Kindles? Okay, so when we walked into Toy Story Land, when we walked into Toy Story Land, what did you guys all see? Lex, you go first. What did you say? A big footprint, and it's and it was Andy's footprint. And my dad and me, we got to go 
on the Slinky Roller Coaster ride. All right, so. And I got to saw Woody and Buzz ears. Woody and Buzz ears. So all right, so we what did so what did everybody first? What did everybody think of alien swirling saucers? That was really fun because they saw plates and aliens. I loved it. You loved it. Did you like it, Lex? Yeah, yeah. it was really fun. What and you, spin. Did you spin, and spin. And Jack, what did you like about alien swirling saucers? Because it be screams so loud. Yeah. Okay, so. You guys all love the Alien Swirling Saucers. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, we wrote Toy Story Midway Mania 2. What does that mean? But the, it's Toy Story Mania. Yeah. Remember with the, when you do the targets and the shooting yeah, and all that? Did you, did you guys like that ride, too? Yeah, it was really so fun. So, please turn the and kid the off for a minute. And the waiting line was fun, too. And the what was? The waiting line. Oh, waiting in line, the queue? Yeah. yeah. What did you guys see in the queue? Mr. Potato Head? Yeah. Look at her getting dead on her feet. Get what on her feet? Dead skin. You're getting dead skin on your feet? Okay. Let's try to just really for one more minute stay on topic. <laughs> and I just want you to know. Drinking the juice box. Yes, he is drinking a juice box. Okay. So let's really quickly. I want to hear what you guys thought about the, the line at Toy Story Mania. Did you guys all like it? I hated it. You hated it? Okay. <laughs> what did you guys see in that line that you liked? I saw really cool stuff. On, on I the saw the double Little Bo Peep, you saw cool stuff on the roof? Yeah. Like Monopoly and uh -huh. Uno cards. Yeah. I, and I got everything I saw. And, it was, and one Uno card was holding the door. That was, was cool. so fun. I saw a wild, an Uno wild card pick up four. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Zoe, Kindle off for one more minute, please. Because, Zoe, I wanted to get your... Zoe, come yeah. here. So get, come here. I just wanted to get your... Everybody who's listening... First of all, everybody say hi to the listener. So everybody who's listening right now wants to know, Zoe, since you were the only one that rode Slinky Dog Dash, yeah. what did you think of Slinky Dog Dash? Yeah. You sit up and tell everybody. Did you like it? I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. What did you love about it? Now, what you said to me before we rode, you said... It, Dad, it, Dad, this wasn't fast. You said this wasn't fast. It's Really fast. It's really fast. Yeah. Did you go sideways? Yeah. yeah did you a put your times. sideways a couple times? Did yeah. you put your hands up? Yeah. Well, I wasn't scared. You weren't scared <laughs> at all. Cute. So yeah, she wasn't scared. She you said two seconds. Now I'm done. <laughs> okay, you heard it from the. She's usually a little more nice than this, aren't you, Zoe? Yeah. But we've been in the parks all day, and she's a little tired. She said that I said two seconds, and she's done. So you might hear the Kindle on in the background. That means that you can hear it. They can hear it, yes. That means, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we don't have to celebrate it. That means that she is done talking about Toy Story Midway Mania and uh, Slinky Dog Dash. So, Lex, do you, would you like to keep talking about the, the day? Yeah, I love it. Okay, let's let's go. Alexa and I will go adjourn into the other room with our juice boxes. Lex, wanna grab your juice box? Grab your juice box, and we'll go in here and we'll finish talking about it. So that went well, I think. I apologize for the echo. We are now in the main room of our boardwalk room, and it's a little echoey. I don't have the pillows. Uh, the, the little makeshift studio that I had set up earlier. So, Lex, a couple more things. Uh, about Toy Story uh, Mania. I mean, about Toy Story Land. What else did you notice that you really liked on land? Anything else? That there was characters randomly walking. Okay, who did you see? I saw the Green Army Man. Oh, and I yeah. saw Buzz, Woody, and, and Jess. That's right. And I also saw a little girl on the coast wearing a costume of, asleep. Asleep? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So as exciting to you, as exciting as seeing those characters, was seeing a little girl asleep in a stroller <laughs> with a costume on. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, yeah, it is funny. That's hey. the only thing I like about it. <laughs> but she was holding a water bottle, I trust. She was holding a water bottle? <laughs> yeah. All right, this is very good stuff. Um, so, okay. Let's stay on topic now. Let's stay on topic. Yeah. <laughs> you seem like me doing this podcast. Uh, All right, so what... Um, 
there's just one more question I wanted to ask you. Okay. What did you think about what the food looked like at Woody's Lunchbox? Does that sound like something you would eat? I don't know. I didn't actually go in there. So there was, there, they have a Monte Cristo sandwich, which is ham and cheese, on, like a, almost like a grilled ham and cheese with powdered sugar that you dip in jelly. Would you eat that? I don't know. You, you, can, you can be honest. I would say only the jelly. Only the jelly. All right. All right, so, but overall, we're going we're gonna to do a voting here at the end. Overall, when it comes to Toy Story Land, mm -hmm. do you give it thumbs up, thumbs sideways, or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Thumbs up? I give it a thumbs up, too. We're two thumbs up. Two thumbs. Two, oh, two thumbs up from Alexa. So, Lex, thank you so much for being my guest on the podcast this week. You were a very, very good guest Unlike your sister, who was kind of a grumper butt and didn't want to answer questions and would rather play her Kindle after a long day in the parks here in Walt Disney World, and your brother, who couldn't bother himself to get out of bed. Who didn't really want to talk. Who didn't want to talk, who didn't want to get out of bed. So this is a lot of fun. Lex, you're my, you, this is why you'll always be my favorite kid. <laughs> only kidding. Uh, but I'd still like you more. Yeah. No, only kidding. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Bye, Lex. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There Disney Podcast. Thank you so much for listening again to this episode. I am back in my little tiny tent that I made myself to kind of cut down on the background noise of recording. This was a great episode. I hope you enjoyed my crazy children at the end giving you their, their reviews for... Uh, Toy Story Land, as you hear a door slam in the background of the of the hotel room. These are this is being recorded on the fly and live. And while that's fun, it's not exactly professional. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Just remember, there will be a new episode of the Ear Today Disney Podcast coming up each and every Monday, as well as a new episode of the Word of the Week. Or it's a food world each and every Wednesday or Thursday or Friday later in the week. So until next time, thank you again so much for listening. Have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.